Hello everyone, my name is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo4j, and here I am again recording another demonstration of the new fancy Bloom, Neo4j Bloom visualization and discovery tool set. And today I won't be uh, demonstrating you this uh, fancy new tool set using a beer database, but I'll actually be using a little bit of more sophisticated and interesting data set, at least for business users, um, and that's a fraud detection data set. This fraud detection data set has been generated for, for us, right? So it's a fake data set, but it's still quite interesting. It allows us to look at specific types of patterns that we see a lot in uh, the fraud domain. So uh, let's get going with that. So I've got my, fraud, my Bloom um, demo going here, but as you can tell, it has an old perspective. So I'll probably need to generate a new perspective here. Right, and I'll use the auto-generate capability to do that. The auto-generate capability actually looks into the, debate, into the database and it finds the different uh, uh, labels and types of data that I've got in there and it assigns some default coloring to that. I can change that coloring the way I want and uh, actually what I can also do is uh, uh, change some of the other look and feel aspects but we'll get into that a little bit later. So now I can start interacting with it. So if I, for example, go here and I say, account holder right so then i click this and i get a lot of account holders right more than 5000 nodes uh, displayed on the screen and you'll notice that it does that quite quickly and quite um, easily i can zoom in the way i want right um, i can do whatever i want i can select and unselect by clicking over here let's unselect a little bit uh, a little part of it and then go back here and reselect a smaller part of it i can do that by drawing on that rectangle right a right click uh, or a long click, I mean, and then um, select like that. Now it's selected part of the data set, right? And I can see that because if I do Command Shift D, it will only leave that part of the data set open. Command F, right? And it shows me those uh, data elements uh, in the center of the screen. I can do all of that with the mouse as well, right? So Command F, fit to selection, dismiss a bunch of nodes, or Shift Command D, and that um, actually dismisses the other nodes. So now it's, um, it's given me these um, these nodes, right? And I can actually start navigating, right? I can say, okay, well, why don't you give me a couple of these, right? For example, this one, that one, and that one, right? So now there's three of them that are highlighted with a white little um, band uh, at, the, at the edge, right? And I can say, Control E, expand those. Show me what's inside. Right, uh, I can expand those again by doing another Control E and another Control E, and then you know you can see that the data set gets richer and richer and richer. Control Shift um, D, and it dismisses everything else again, and that's how I can start uh, uh, looking at this in in quite a bit more detail. Right, if for example, let's see here, I've got um, a little bit of a problem in one of the data elements here, right? So I'm zooming in here. And all of a sudden, I notice that, hey, this guy over here has a, um, a, a wrong spelling, right? Shonda Viator, that's clearly not the right name. It's supposed to be Shonda Viatora, right? So then I can say Control-I or right-click and inspect, right? And it gives me more data about um, this particular node. It gives the birth date, first name, full name, last name, and all of that stuff, right? And I can say, okay, I want to uh, change this property, right? The full name, right? Save that back. And of course, also change this one because, you know, we want to keep it consistent, right? Now, um, this has also been updated in the data set. Right, so that's uh, that's kind of, kind of neat. You can also edit uh, the data, obviously only if you have the right permissions on the data set. Right, so um, that was part of this, right? But I can also have some other patterns here. So if I want to say um, first name Dirk, right? Then you can tell what it's doing, right? It's actually creating a more sophisticated graph pattern by associating Dirk to the first name property of the account holder nodes, right? It's found me one node that's Dirk Stakes here, uh, right? And so I can actually um, start looking at this guy and expand this some more. 
right? Um, you'll also notice that sometimes when you have a lot of nodes on the screen, right? Like in, in this case, again, right? When I have all the account holder nodes, it can kind it can get kind of complicated to see what's on the screen, right? And sometimes you actually want to customize the visualization a little bit, right? So I can go into the perspective and say that, hey, account holders are actually persons, right? So what I can do is I can associate a little icon to that. Uh, I can do the same thing with a bank account and say, okay, this guy wants to have a um, bank icon, right? Um, a card, you know, I'd like to have a card icon, right? For example, that one, uh, a credit card that should be a different type of icon, uh, right, so I've got the Amex here. Um, let's see what else do I have here. Oh, social security number, that's an interesting one usually, right? So I'll associate another icon with that as well. And then, of course, the phone number, right? I want to have it last and not least. I'd like to have a specific icon for that one as well, right? Now, what's cool about this is that if you look at it this way, there's nothing much to be seen, right? But if you zoom in, right, let's put this in the center here. Right? You can see that all of a sudden the icons start appearing, right? And then you zoom in some more and then the captions start appearing, right? So it does a really nice job at you know, creating these visual cues for you to understand you know, what's actually displayed on the screen. I like that a lot. I think it's very, very powerful. Right, what else, what's also really powerful is, of course, the query capabilities that we find in the perspectives, right? Um, so we've looked a little bit at the graph patterns already, but uh, the real power, in my humble opinion, is the uh, custom search phrases. So um, I'd like to show you how that's done and how we can create these custom search phrases really, really easily. Uh, now, in a fraud data set, I'm going to create a search phrase that is looking for fraud rings. Right, so for all rings, and to do that, I've got a really complicated cipher query. I'll just copy paste here, which is doing exactly that. It looks for the fraud rings. Right now, as a business user, I don't want to be confronted with these fraud fraud rings queries. Right, I just want to be looking at fraud rings, nothing more. I'll add one more here, like a skimmer a query. Right, finding card skimmers. Find card skimmers, right? I'll save that. And now if I go back to my perspective and say, okay, I want to look at the fry, find the fraud rings, right? It's actually going to show me four nodes that are involved in some kind of fraudulent ring structures, right? It doesn't really show here, but if I expand these guys, right, then very quickly, it becomes obvious that these guys are doing fishy things, right? Not only are they sharing social security um, uh, information, they're also sharing phone numbers. You know, some of them may be uh, sharing addresses, right? As you can tell over here. So there's clearly something fishy going on here, right? I can do the same for the skimmers, card skimmers, right? Um, and it's actually showing me that um, really, really easily as well. Right, so it's got the, the skimmers right here. Let me select that and fit that to the screen. Right, you can see this card over here and it's been using different transactions and different people and uh, it's, uh, it's immediately showing me that. Now, this custom search query functionality is actually even more powerful than that because it allows you to parameterize these um, queries, right? What do I mean with that? Well, it can ask you, you can ask the user for interesting input, right? It can, you can, so for example, if you were looking for fraudulent, potentially fraudulent transactions above a certain threshold, then obviously it's quite easy to write a query for that, right? Where you match a money transfer and its surrounding nodes, where the amount of the money transfer is based on a user parameter, 
right? I can actually create a search phrase here that says um, uh, money transfers above amount of, of no, let's just say above and then say parameter, right? So this is the parameter that you find over here, higher money transfers, right? Um, the parameter is going to be um, offering up some suggestions. Suggestions are can, can be done with um, these types of queries, right? Based on the money transfer label and its key, right? It's going to offer up some um, some some potential suggestions. So, what I need to do now is, you know, in typical business language, money transfers above a certain level, right? So, if I say money transfers above, you know, I don't know, 500, right? It's going to give me a lot of nodes still. Right, it's still quite a bit of information here. Difficult to um, to look at that. So let me clear this one again. I say money oh, money transfers above I don't know twenty thousand, right? And and then it's probably going to show me a little bit less information and something that is easier for me to investigate, right? So if I now look at the money transfers, right? So the money transfers, those are the yellow ones here, right? Let's see, we'll, we can select those, we can, uh, dismiss the others, and then maybe select a couple of these guys and expand them. And then all of a sudden we can start investigating what's really going on here. That's really the power of these custom search phrases. Um, there's a lot more to it. Uh, I think Bloom is doing a, a great job at explore, exposing the information in the graph structures to us in a very, very user-friendly and business-oriented way. And I look forward to seeing more of that in, in the future. And I wish that you would all um, um, explore this uh, as well. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do with it and maybe it's applicable to your domain as well. Hopefully so. I'll uh, look forward to hearing from you and I wish you a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.